Well, y'all look at that. Look at the glory of the Lord. I'm sitting over here talking to my son about God and we're having our little daily devotion. And y'all, I just looked up and I was like, my heavens, isn't it gorgeous, Mariana? Y'all have a beautiful day. That is what I'm talking about. God's creation, nothing better. Good morning. Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to another day. This is the day that the Lord has made and I am so glad that you are here to join me. I want to talk to you about trusting God even through the trials, even through the storm, even through a financial, economic, um, critical, whatever <laughs> crises. I, that's what I'm trying to say that you might be going through. How to trust God to be your Jehovah Jaira, because God, when we put our trust in him and not the world system, but the kingdom system, he will come through with that through for us in ways that we couldn't even imagine. And earlier this week, I don't know if it was earlier this week or last week, you'll have to remind me, when we talked about Elijah and how God can use even unbelievers, even unclean things to bless you and to make sure that you have your provisions. He did it with the Israelites as they left Egypt. They gave them all of their wealth. We saw a wealth transfer. Why? Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And I know a lot of people can get so concerned. Look at the market, look at the stocks, but who is our provider? Who is our sustainer? And just like God did for Elijah, he can remove you from a place and even take you to a spot where you can be fed by and you can be provided. In this case, it was a bird. It was a raven for Elijah because he can use any means he needs to get to you in order to make sure that you have what you need, child of God. And I love how Solomon says, you know, I think it's in the book of Proverbs, if he dresses the lily of the valleys and the birds, they don't worry about what they're going to eat or what they're going to wear because they are dressed in splendor. How much more of you, child of God, he says, that are splendored in greater robes than even King Solomon. He wants to provide for you, but you've got to trust that we serve an abundant God, that our God, he has has a thousand cattle on a hill. There is no lack in the kingdom. When you're a child of God and you're on the kingdom payroll, you trust God that he's going to make a way out of nowhere. He can take dried up streams and turn them into rivers, right? Hallelujah. And so I want to read this to you because the Lord led, it to, led me to it. It's called a, D, a David song and it's um, Psalm 16. Sorry. But it says, keep me safe, O God. I run for dear life to you. I say to God, be my Lord. Without you, nothing makes sense. And these God-chosen lives all around, what splendid friends they make. Don't just go shopping for a God, little G. Gods are not for sale. I swear I'll never treat God's name like brand names. My choice is you, God first and only. And now I find I'm your choice. Isn't that beautiful to understand? You know, so many times we think that we're pursuing God, but all along he's pursuing us too. And God makes you feel like you're the only one in the room. You know, you've got other brothers and sisters in Christ, but he has that way of making you feel seen and making you feel valuable. And that's where that love affair begins because God, he loves us like no one else can love us. He is that first love and you know, I wish that everyone could experience that, that they would take the time to know Abba because as you build a relationship with him, there's not, there's no one, nothing like him on the earth. Um, but sometimes we let the enemy come in and we let the enemy try to tell us who we are instead of believing what God says about us. And it can cause all kinds of condemnation in a believer's life. But you've got to trust and know that as you walk with God, that he values you, that you are the apple of his eye. I've come to tell you that, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And this song of David, it just reminds us, you know, how wonderful it is that we choose God, but how much more that he chose us, right? That we're his choice. And it says, my choice is you, God, first and only, key word, first and only, 
And now I find I'm your choice. You set me up with a house and a yard, and then you made me your heir. David is saying, not only do you choose me, but you provide for me. You give me this beautiful home. You make sure that I have all that I need, more than I need. How many of you know King Solomon and King David and Job? They had more than they needed, right? God blessed them to prosper, not just to get by. And my message that I want to keep relaying to you, we serve a God that wants to bless you but beyond measure not just enough to get by but if you can't perceive that you serve a good god if you don't perceive that you serve an abundant god who created the universe who created everything within it who gives us the power to get wealth how can you receive something that you begrudge so i want you to change your mindset because there's so many believers in the body of christ that have a poverty mindset that think that they are not supposed to you know have this or that and they can't have this wonderful life and they can't take part of, you know, luxurious things because they're supposed to be humble because they equate humility with poverty. Isn't that so sad? It just goes to show how many don't know the word and they alter it because they have no understanding. We have to make sure that we are in these scriptures and we're allowing the Lord to speak life into us because God, what he does when his hand comes upon you, he's going to bless you. Think about Abraham, all right? Think about all of the patriarchs. Think about all of the heroes of faith. Yes, yes. And he goes on and he says, the wise counsel God gives when I'm awake is confirmed by my sleeping heart. Oh, you all know I love this. I can attest to this in the night that the Lord will speak to your spirit. Your spirit, man, is still awake and he will download, he will sing over you. That scripture is true, you all. He will speak to you, he will download revelation. Your body is at rest, but your spirit, it is alive. And I love how David says that the wise counsel that God gives me when I'm awake, when I'm walking and talking with him throughout the day, at my job, on the way to school, while I'm making dinner with my kids, while we're sitting at the table, while we're taking a job, while we're exercising, you know? Um, because God says we're to do these things, to teach our children as we walk and talk and in the byways and at the table, that it is a, a regular conversation, the Lord, right? It's not just for Sunday, <laughs> that this is something our children hear all the time. We're talking about God like he's our family member because he is our father, right? And our children need to know it's a relationship. Do y'all get where I'm going? Like, like you talk about Nana and Papa, you ought to be talking about God, right? Like you talk about your family members, your best friend. It should be so, it should just roll off of your tongue. It should not be unnatural for you to speak about God. And you shouldn't be ashamed to speak about God, right? Because he is Abba. Like, people should associate you with all, all right? Okay, another story for another day. Okay, let's keep going. It says, day and night, I'll stick with God. I've got a good thing going, and I'm not letting it go. I'm happy from the inside out and from the outside in. I'm firmly formed because when we're anchored in Christ, he gives us that stability. We're not double-minded like the Bible speaks of people who are, you know, everything. One minute they're thinking this way, the next minute they think that way. If this person thinks that way, well, they think that way. They have that, I don't know, like a parrot mindset. Whatever the person owner says, well, guess what? That's what they're going to say too. It's just they don't, they're they're double-minded. You, you just don't know where they stand, okay? And it says, you canceled my ticket to hell. Whoo, that's not my destination. Now you've got my feet on the life path, all radiant from the shining of your face. Ever since you took my hand, I'm on the right way. And I just love that. That's such a beautiful psalm. And this is a man, this is why David was a man after God's own heart. The love that he had for God, it was just so real. It was as if he was just, you know, it was always like, like a love for a woman, right? His love was so passionate and on fire for God because God was his sustainer. When he was out there in the wilderness fighting tigers, bears, and lions, oh my, God was with him. He was a worshiper when no one could see. And that's how we have to be. When no one sees us, how is our worship life looking? How is our time with God looking when it's just you and him, right? So 
I hope that this word blesses you and encourages you. But I want to say, remember that God is your provider, Jehovah Jireh. So do not get shaken when everything around us is shaking. He is our firm rock. He is our stability, right? We are on the kingdom payroll. So you continue to build and you build in faith knowing that God is able to sustain what it is that he's called you to build, right? And so we understand that we live in Goshen. And even though there's darkness all around, <laughs> there's light where we are. There's substance, there's provision in Goshen, all right? And it reminds me one more thing, guys. I don't mean to prolong this, but it's on my heart. When we talked about Ruth, and we talked about how Naomi and Ruth, they set out to leave Bethlehem because there was a famine um, there and they thought that they could find a better, sorry guys, my um, battery cut off. But what I was saying is like, they trusted in their own understanding instead of believing that God could provide for them. So they left Bethlehem, the house of bread, and they ended up going to another land. And there, unfortunately, Ruth lost her husband. Naomi lost her husband and both her sons, you know. And so it's just a hard lesson that they have to return to Bethlehem and only to see that God sustained those people. That God, he helped them to prosper. And for many, like Bo, they even attained great wealth in famine because God has the power to do that. Even as he did for Isaac when he planted his seed, the Lord said, no, 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 I know there's a famine here. I know there's lots going on. I know the economic system and the status of what's happening here is bleak, but I'm gonna need you to stay right here, okay? Don't go off to Egypt, Isaac. I'm gonna need you to stay right here. And he did, and he planted his seed there. And guess what? Because he trusted God and he planted seed, he continued to build. God blessed him with a hundredfold return. And that is my prayer for you all, that as we build, it is my prayer for myself and my family and my children, that as we build, so it is my prayer that the Lord will make you a thousand times more, a thousand times greater, that you will receive a hundredfold in your return as you build unto the Lord. So be of good faith, be of good cheer. Remember that you are the head and not the tail. You are above only and never beneath. Thank you all for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Please make sure that you share the video, hit the like if it blessed you, and I will see you later on today. I plan on to do an Ask Ruby, a Dear Ruby question. So yeah, I'll see you all later on this evening. You all be blessed and take care.